Alright, we have more fun little deck list out of the extravaganza and other things. If you guys performed and did well, please send your list on over. I would love to take some time to peep these lists and anything that I might have missed over the last couple of weeks, if you've done well with. Like I said, send it on over. I would love to take a look at it and just have a nice little discussion on it. So, next up, we need to talk about our fun little experience with Dogmatica Invoked. And I gotta give a shout out here uh, for uh, Team Got My or Got Milk Gaming to Lars Jordan uh, for Joe Marzan and uh, Jose Torres, the o, uh, the OTS store owner for Tower Games, and then Jose is for JM Games as well for our winning duelist here. All right, so what what's our game plan with this deck? So we're going to once again. Do the same thing that everybody else is pretty much doing with this deck. We're using the Dogmatica package here as a means to use punishment in a more aggressive manner. And punishment being probably the best two for one in the game is actually insanity. Your best thing that you want is you want to open up going first. Uh, you want to be able to make that Link Karibo, turn it on into Search for the Multi Faker. And you're going to get, what, like three interruptions? Punishment plus multi-faker, two interruptions through the punishment and the initus, and then the multi-faker will get the silk weeds. So three interruptions. Um, does anybody beat that? I don't, I don't think people beat that right now. So that that's a, a big thing is how much aggression can you put onto the field? How much disruption can you put onto your opponent to put you in that game-winning position? All right, so we have one copy of Altergeist Kungari, triple copies of Marionetta, triple copies of Mellow Zeke, triple copies of Multi Faker Man, with the one Zilla Guidos. I definitely have noticed at this point in time that the one Zilla Guidos has pretty much become the one mandatory norm here. Uh, if you're trying to play more than that, I guess you're just running into consistency issues. We also have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and two copies of Dogmatica Ecclesia, the Virtuous. And then we have Triple copies of Nidir Servant, one singular pot of duality, and triple copies of Pot of Extravagance, wrapping up the spells here. Traps, we have one Manifestation, two Protocol, triple copies of Dogmatica Punishment, triple copies of Evenly Matched, triple copies of Personal Spoofing, triple copies of the Solemn Judgment Man, and the triple copies of the Solemn Strike Machine, wrapping up the main deck. Extra deck down here, we have two copies of Link Karibo, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Artemis, triple copies of Altergeist Hextia, one Akashic Magician. This is a kind of a cute little staple here. I like this. We also have one Access Code Machine, one Wind Pegasus Edignister, one Titan Clad with triple copies of Anintis to mess up your opponent's day off of Punishment. Thank you, Punishment. Uh, side deck here, we have triple copies of Gamma Seal, one Feather Duster, triple copies of Mystic Mind for when the game kind of goes south and we need to be able to recover. Uh, this will be your game plan. We have two copies of Anti-Spell Fragrance, two Heavy Storm Duster, one in pre-order, and triple copies of Summon Limit, wrapping up the Dogmatica Ultra Geist, everybody. Like I said, I like how this little tech engine here gives us searchability, ability to search for more copies of this for the next turn. Do not underestimate the good consistency that this engine actually brings to this deck. It, it's actually dumbfounding to me how good this actually ends up being at the end of the day. All right, next up, we also have Thunder Dragons. Now, this won an extravaganza win I'm at, and I'm still a little bit shocked about this, actually. Um, this was Santiago Martin Lopez's list, and this was for Draco Hobbies in Colombia. This was the giant card winner. Now, We've been looking at Thunder Dragon a little bit uh, ever since they've lost Colossus. They've kind of taken a step back, and that's not a real bad thing, but a lot of people do question mark what this deck can actually do at this point, and quite honestly, it's still pretty cool that this deck still can do what it does. It's still great at building these huge boards, but at this point in time, it's it's not as powerful as it was, but I do like the innovation and what we're trying to do with this deck 
evolving it. So we have triple copies of Aloof Lupine, two copies of Battery Man Sola, one Collapse Serpent, one Lavinier, one Chaos Valkyria, one The Chaos Creator, triple copies of Thunder Dragon, triple copies of Thunder Dragon Dark with one Dragon Hawk, only two copies of Matrix. I've definitely have noticed in a lot of these builds that Matrix has just lost a lot of its momentum. This card used to be super good, but the functionality on this card has definitely gone way down from what it used to be. Now, if Colossus was around at higher numbers, I think we'd probably play this card at three, but it's interesting. We also have triple copies of Thunder Dragon Roar and one copy of the Wyvern Buster. I almost feel like this is an OCG base list because one Dragon Hawk. Hmm. Right? The OCG has it at one. <laughs> nice, Sue. We also have triple copies of Allure Darkness, aka use my effects when banished. Triple copies of Chaos Space, triple copies of Forbidden Droplet with one Gold Sark, one Scapegoat, and one Thunder Dragon Fusion. Mm, cool fact, we can drop that off the Verte. Alright, we also have triple Lost Wind. This is an interesting tech choice. I didn't actually think anybody would do this, but if you're able to set up a Titan backed with a recurrable Lost Wind, seems like some pretty free real estate to me. And we also have triple copies of Torrential Tribute. Extra deck here, we have one Relinquished Anima, one Verte Anaconda Machine. One Link Kriba, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Cerberus, one IP Mascarena with one Cross Sheep, one Boralode, one Soldier of Chaos, one Apollosa, one Access Code, one Abyss Dweller, and two copies of Thunder Dragon Titan. Side deck here we have one Pankertops, triple copies of Nibiru, triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone, one Feather Duster, triple evenly matched, one Red Reboot, and triple copies of Summon Limit, wrapping up Thunder Dragons, aka sit on Titan the deck and then just look at your opponent and go I don't think you can out this like that that's the best gist of anything that I can come up with for this deck and it's uh it's kind of interesting last list I have for you guys today is dun 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 just kidding it's Dragon Maid so we have another Dragon uh, Dragon Maid is getting a lot of love right now like this is kind of cool so this was Jose Thomas Mala's list uh, and this uh, was shared to us by Camilio Ignacio Malaya. Man, I'm so bad with names. I apologize if I ever uh, butcher these. So this is going to be your control build. Um, we also have the one fusion. I know previous builds have played two of this. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, I understand why. But at the end of the day, if DD Crow's running around in your format, there's only so much you can really do about it. So that's understandable. So... We have triple copies of Asher Blossom, Enjoy Spring, two copies of the little black metal dragon so that we can search for the Red Eyes Darkness Middle, triple copies of Chamber Dragon Maid, the best Dragon Maid in my opinion, one copy of Ernest for the additional extender, one copy of Lapore, and then we also have the one copy of Tank Heck, our super discard power. And then we have triple copies of Skull, or uh, Ghost Bell, aka Skullmeister number two. We have two copies of Kitchen Dragon Mid, one Nurse Dragon Mid, triple copies of Parlor, one copy of Red Eyes, and then we also have triple copies of Skullmeister. We're maxed out on the hate hand traps here. Uh, the impact on both of these, though, has definitely gained a lot of value this format. Spells, we have one changeover, two copies of Hospitality, one Monster Reborn, triple copies of Pot of Extravagance, two copies of World Legacy Guard Dragon. Hmm. I do know there were some earlier builds that were trying to push three of this. I just feel like that this is just a dead card at that point. You know what I mean? We also have triple copies of Dragon Maid Tidying. Best card. Free returns, by the way. This card's so good. We also have two Ice Dragon's Prison and two copies of Paleozoic Dynamiscus. Extra deck here, we have one Striker Dragon, one Al Mirage, one Phoenix, one Imduk, triple copies of the Heretic Seal, Pisty and LP, triple copies of House, and triple copies of Show. Side deck here, we have two Alphas, one Pankertops, triple Nibir, triple Cosmic, one Feather Duster, one Regeki, one Downtime, and triple copies of Rivalry of the Warlords. Wrapping up Jose's list. And all of these other lists, actually. These are all very interesting. Honestly, I'm looking forward to seeing where the progression of the metagame goes from here for some of these more rogue picks, because this is some very interesting stuff. I will say that. So what do you guys think about these lists? Please leave a comment down below. I look forward to hearing what you guys say about these. And well, I'll see your beautiful faces later on in the day. Peace out, guys. Thank you, patrons, for making the ride never truly end without you guys' support. Well, 
I would probably be doing Drupal Shuffle videos for a living. Guys, please check out VanCall40 for all of your Cardfight Vanguard content brought to you by MCall40. And if you are looking to pick up singles, check out MCallGames.com for your trading card game needs. Thanks for watching, everybody.